Chapter 3 The Foundation and Expansion of the British Rule in India Vasco da Gama landed in Calicut on the western coast of India. Later, at the beginning of the 16th century, the Portuguese established their power on the west coast of India. The Dutch, the British and the French traders came to India in the 17th century. At that time, the Mughals were the mighty power in India. We shall study the foundation and expansion of the British rule in India against this background. Initial Activities of the European Traders Initially, the European traders carried on their trade peacefully by obtaining trade permits from the Mughal Emperor. To facilitate their trade, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the British and the French trading companies had established their factories or trading centers in India. After the death of the Emperor Aurangzeb, the Mughal power began to decline. The various governors or the subedars of the Mughal Empire started acting independently. This led to political instability in the country. The European traders exploited this situation to their own advantage. The British-French Conflict There was intense rivalry among the European powers in securing monopoly trading rights in India. In the 18th century, a conflict for the seat of the Nawab of Karnataka flared up among the Indian rulers. The English and the French saw this as a golden opportunity to enter the Karnataka politics. The French offered military assistance to one of the aspirants while the British sided with his opponent. This situation resulted in three wars between the French and the British. These are known as the Karnataka Wars. The British defeated the French in the Third War. Thereafter, the British did not have any strong European rival left in India. Political Developments in Bengal The British and the French traders began to misuse the trade concessions granted to them by the Indian rulers. The British traders fortified their factories without seeking the permission from Siraj ud daula the Nawab of Bengal. This led to a conflict between the British and Siraj ud daula There was a battle at Plassey in 1757. The British lured Mir Jafar, a general, to their side by promising to make him the Nawab of Bengal. Therefore, the Nawab's army under the command of Mir Jafar did not join the battle against the British. The Nawab was forced to retreat. Thus, the British won the battle not by strength of arms, but by treachery and deceit. Mir Jafar became the Nawab of Bengal with the support of the British, but later, when he opposed the British, they made his son-in-law Mir Qasim the Nawab. When Qasim in his turn tried to check the illegal trade practices of the British, they brought back Mir Jafar again as the Nawab. In order to restrain the activities of the British in Bengal, Shuja ud the Nawab of Awadh, Mir Qasim and Shah Alam, the Mughal Emperor, set out on a joint expedition. They fought a battle at Baksar in Bihar in 1764. The British won this battle. After this battle, a treaty was signed at Allahabad. By this treaty, the British secured the right to collect the revenue in Bengal. This right is known as Diwani right. Thus, the foundation of the British rule in India was laid in Bengal. Anglo-Mysore Conflict Four wars took place between the rulers of Mysore and the British. After the death of Hyder Ali, the ruler of Mysore, his son Tipu Sultan vigorously carried on the campaign against the British. He fell fighting in the battle of Shriranga Pattanam in 1799. So, the kingdom of Mysore passed under the British dominion. The British and the Marathas Mumbai was the chief centre of the British in western India. They were also trying to secure the neighbouring territory, but the Marathas had a firm hold on this territory. After the death of Peshwa Madhav Rao, Raghunath Rao, in his greed for the seat of the Peshwa, asked the British for help. Thus, the British entered the Maratha politics. Three wars took place between the Marathas and the British between 1774 and 1818. 
the Maratha Sardars faced the British unitedly in the First War and won it. The First Anglo-Maratha War ended with the Treaty of Salbai in 1782. The Subsidiary Alliance Lord Wellesley came to India as the Governor-General in 1798. It was his policy to bring the whole of India under the British rule. With this end in view, he entered into treaties of subsidiary alliance with many Indian rulers. According to this treaty, the Indian rulers were given assurance of the British military assistance, but only under certain conditions. The Indian rulers were to keep a British military force in their respective territories. They also had to either pay in cash or cede a part of their territory, giving that much revenue to the company towards the maintenance of the force. Also, they could have political relations with other powers only through the mediation of the British. They had to maintain a British resident or political agent at their courts. Some Indian rulers accepted this alliance and thus lost their freedom. The Peshwa Bajirao II entered into the Subsidiary Alliance Treaty with the English in 1802. This treaty is known as the Treaty of Basain or Vasai. Some Maratha Sardars opposed this treaty. This led to the Second Anglo-Maratha War. The British interference in the Maratha state increased after their victory in this war. Bajirao II found it intolerable and went to war against the British. He was defeated in this war. He surrendered to the British in 1818. The British capture Sindh. In order to ensure the safety of their power in India, the British turned to the northwest frontier. The British were afraid of Russian aggression on India via Afghanistan. They, therefore, decided to bring Afghanistan under their dominance. Roads leading to Afghanistan passed through the province of Sindh. Realizing the strategic importance of Sindh, the British captured it in 1843. The Fall of the Sikhs at the beginning of the 19th century, Ranjit Singh held the reins of the Sikh power in the Punjab. After his death, he was succeeded by his minor son, Dalip Singh. Dalip Singh's mother, Queen Jindan, began to rule the kingdom on his behalf. She could not, however, control the Sardars. Taking advantage of the situation, the British lured some of them to their side. Under the impression that the British would invade the Punjab, the Sikhs attacked the British. The Sikhs were defeated in this first Anglo-Sikh war. The British retained Dalip Singh on the Sikh throne. The growing influence of the British in the Punjab was hard to tolerate for some freedom-loving Sikhs. Mulraj, the chieftain of Multan, rose against the British. Thousands of Sikh soldiers joined the war against British. The Sikhs, however, lost the second war also. The British annexed the territory of the Punjab to their kingdom in 1849. Thus, rendering all the Indian powers ineffectual, the British brought the whole of India under their supremacy.